pork chops with a country gravy on the side I have some macaroni and cheese and some green beans but I'm pretty sure you guys know how to follow uh, instructions and I oh first I want to say thank you for all the birthday love you guys showed me really did appreciate it I had a great day um, 17 now so. so you just gonna bring me a birthday gift on my birthday to my birthday party on my birthday with a birthday gift Happy birthday. Let's get started. So first thing you want to start by doing is getting your dredge ready for your pork chops, which is just really flour and some seasoning. So you want to start with a semi-deep bowl, and you're going to need a cup of flour, and then for, yeah, let's just start with a cup of flour. Okay. I cook a lot, so I need the, the big bag, right? And Great Valley, always keep it strong. Great Valley, Great Valley is a bank, I think. Anyways, you need a cup of flour. All right, boom. Flour in the bowl. All right. Now, for your seasonings, what we're gonna be using today is some salt, salt, some pepper, Pepper. We're also going to be using some thyme leaves. Okay. A little bit of this Creole seasoning, kind of like a Cajun seasoning, just because it adds a little heat to the pork chops, and that's what I want. Uh, you don't, if you don't necessarily have this, you don't need to use it, or if you just want to use cayenne pepper just for the spice. But I really do like to use this Creole seasoning. As y'all hear, there's really not much in there, but you know, yeah, yeah, do that. Um. But garlic powder. This is the same thing, it just doesn't have much in it, so grab the same. Onion powder. And you know, a little bit, you know, you gotta have lard seasoning. That was close. But you gotta have the lard seasoning, right? So start by throwing your flour out, grab yourself a fork, and just, you can sift the flour to make it, you know, um, really fine, but you necessarily don't have to, uh, just working it with a fork will do the trick. So go ahead, add your lard seasoning in. I really don't have measurements, it's kind of just for the eye, especially because it's just, you know, it's just a flour. So I guess you can add about a teaspoon of everything in, taste it, see how it goes, and then add more. I kind of eyeball it, but you guys can use it, uh, a teaspoon measure if you guys want. Uh, what I want to say about these pork chops is you can marinate the pork chops. You can marinate them in many different marinades. You can marinate them in buttermilk, and that helps them become really tender um, on the inside. You can marinate them in just Worcestershire sauce and water with a little bit of chicken broth or you know, beef broth. Um, you can do a lot of things with pork chops that will make them really flavorful. But just frying them on the outside and baking them the rest of the way will get that juicy meat that you really do want. Um, without having you know, to overcook your pork chops and, and without having to marinate them. Today I didn't marinate them in anything um, because it's fried and I really just want them to be fried pork chops with my gravy. I don't necessarily want them to have a different flavor. So, um, a little bit, some thyme. With salt, I usually don't use uh, any type of measuring spoon. I am a person who likes salt, and I tend to sometimes over salt. So I like to really measure it in my hand so I can see how much I'm putting in there, so I can you know keep an eye on how much sodium I got in my food. I have in my meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
and don't worry if your um, your flour doesn't have enough seasoning because you will be also seasoning the pork chop. That's why I'm saying just put a little like a teaspoon of everything in here right now, just because you will be seasoning the pork chop. So season this with your flour, but only a little bit. I would say about a half a teaspoon for this with the Cajun spice, especially because you're talking about you're going to be pork chop. A little bit of pepper. Pepper. I like pepper as well. Pepper is something to that. Right? So go ahead and just get that in. Fork it in. I have whip, but um, I just didn't think to grab it. So, you know, we're going to do this. So go ahead. It is nighttime. If you can tell it's pouring and blowing like a freaking moon. But, um,. It is nighttime. I found a way late to cook, but that's okay because the arc comes when the arc comes. All right. So now that we have our flour dredge done, um, move that to the side and start working on your pork chops. Now, I had some napkins sitting under my pork chops while they were draining, and I left them in the packaging so that I could use it to season with, and I don't have to get another plate out or do it directly on my chopping board. It just saves time and it's just more efficient. I also keep a trash bag right next to wherever I'm cooking. Right, right next to wherever I'm cooking just because that's also more efficient. chops with your hands then go ahead and give me a good season if you can season them season obviously that's empty all right so the creole seasoning which is going to go right on top there's not much of this so i'm going to go ahead and use the rest of it save some for the back though you cannot forget the back of the pork chop a little bit of onion powder a little bit of onion powder not much lots of vodka um, the time is mostly for the end cooking just to add a little bit more flavor pepper I have made the mistake of opening the big part and pouring that out so be careful and vigilant when you are using the pepper I probably don't need to say that but you know hey you live in your life right some salt like I said I like to dump it in my hand and then use my, my finger to individually pinch on them just so that I can watch the amount of salt I'm putting on there. You already smell good and they haven't even cooked it. You know, you know they're going to be good when the seasoning smells good, right? A little bit of, well, actually a great amount of garlic powder because garlic powder enhances the flavor of anything you're cooking. I absolutely love to use it in any savory dish that I make. Um, so go ahead and give these a flip and season the same side season everything the same way you did at the beginning take it back home season um, the other side the same as you did the other side <laughs> and then we'll begin the cooking process all right guys so it's time to start cooking our pork chops in judgment so I have a cast iron skillet here with about two tablespoons of butter and then I mean oh take that back with two tablespoons of olive oil and I'm gonna add a tablespoon of butter now. The reason why you do that is you wanna always add your olive oil first because remember your olive oil will keep your butter from browning and turning, you know, you know, nasty colors. You really want your butter to stay that golden crispy color throughout your whole cooking process. Or to do that, you mix it with oil, which will keep it from, you know, turning brown. So add about a tablespoon of butter to here, then start dredging your pork chops. Um, here are our pork chops. I'm making eight today. They are well seasoned if you can see them And we're going to start cooking I did want to show you guys my flour just so you can see um, You I just want you guys to see the oh, I don't know if you guys can see the color in there But there's a lot of color in there and that's how you want your flour you Don't use all your flour and once you finish dredging your pork chops do not throw your flour out because we're going to be using that we're going to be using that um, 
we're gonna be using that for our gravy. So be careful not to throw that out. I have a copper tin, but you can use glass or any type of baking uh, tin that you have for the pork chops. And then you're gonna set your oven to 350, preheat it so that when you finish with that, it's all ready to go. So I'm going to show you guys a really cool trick um, to see if your oil is ready to go. Pretty sure it is, but um, still, this is a nice cool trick to know. So add your tablespoon of butter into this. What you can do is, well, you see how it's already popping like that when I add the butter in there. So I know it's ready, but if you have your olive oil or your vegetable oil on a very high, uh, very low, and you're waiting for it to heat up slowly, uh, put the bottom of the wooden spoon in there, and if it starts to see bubbles form around it, your oil is hot enough for you to cook in. Alright, so that's just a cool little trick that you guys can use for the cooking process. Um, just letting y'all know, it's okay to use your bit in the kitchen. It's just to keep the whole house from burning down and getting really smoky. So, go ahead and take your pork chop, get your flour mixture, your dredge, and go straight in. Now, don't overcrowd the pot because it won't fry right if you overcrowd it. So go ahead and give a good dredge. You want to leave one hand on the flour, untouched, so that you know if you need to flip it or you need to move things around, you have a clean hand and only use one hand to completely dredge the pork chop and lay it into it. Make sure you guys are getting all the excess flour off, but being, you know, generous with the flour in the process, because that's what's going to get it crispy. Right? Lay it right in there. You want to see it start to boil. You want it on medium high heat, okay? Medium high heat, and it's okay to turn it on low before before you put everything in there, just so that the flour doesn't go too quickly. Right. And you have a chance to get all of this. So I'm only adding three at a time in there. You know, it's an even number, but okay. You got to do what you got to do. Get all the excess flour off. Lay that pork chop right in the bottom of your skin. Now, a quicker way to do this is to just make your flour dredge in a Ziploc bag. Throw your pork chops in there, all three of them at a time. Add all those in and cook it slowly. The butter and the oil let us do its job. Let it fry the pork chop. Three, three or four minutes on each side. Flip them over and let them cook. Enjoy your pork chops. You see, I have my medium high heat and that's starting to really cool. This is about ready to turn over. Um, what you want to do is you want to use some type of tongs when you're flipping pork chops. A lot of people use spatulas um, and spoons. That splatters everywhere. That makes a bigger mess for you have to clean up. And you, you just, it's just bad at all. So just use your tongs and flip over your pork chops. Try to make sure that they're not wet. working on your next pork chop until these pork chops come out because it will start to get really dry and soggy. The flour will get soggy on the pork chop and it won't crisp up like you want to. So, give it a nice sear and once your pork chops are done, place them into the uh, copper dish there. Give me some time on one side, I like it a little lighter than the other side, just because that usually the signs are dark and well because it's face down to the copper. So, 350, so I'm gonna go and put these in there and let them finish cooking. I have the other two pork chops that I'm fully cooking in the skillet already, in there with a little bit of butter and the top on. I'm gonna let that cook on medium high heat as well until those are fully cooked through. Keep an eye on those because those will cook a little bit faster than the oven will cook the pork chops that are already baking. Next, the reason why you want to turn your oil on a low heat is because you're going to be measuring it out. So this is about a tablespoon. I can see in my eyes that this is about a tablespoon of, um, of grease and oil and butter that we have in here. So I'm going to use a tablespoon of our dredge flour and mix it with it. So about a tablespoon. A 
Go ahead. All right. Use your whisk and start to whisk in until they combine together. Not low heat, but medium high heat, and let it cook. You don't want it to get too dark, especially because you are making a light gravy. Heavy looking cream in here. This is what's gonna make your gravy white. You want about a half, half to a full cup. But I'm gonna use a full cup because this is also gonna thicken your gravy, right? Add that in there. Whisk completely. Whisk that in. You're like, a whole cup of water in there? Like, there's gonna be licking it. That's what the roux is for. Also, you have the heavy cream in there, so it is gonna stick it up. Whenever it looks too watery, and you're like, this is not gonna thicken up, I just ruined this. Remember, be patient, it will thicken up. Go ahead and check your pork chops. You can do it. Go ahead and pull that out. Season your gravy. Anything that you add into your pork chops so they kind of pair well with each other. Now, one thing a lot of people forget to add into their gravy is some sugar. The sugar is what's going to balance it out because you have a savory meal and no one wants a very um, savory gravy on top of a savory meal, right? So you want to have a little bit of sweetness. Just a little bit. Not too much uh, sugar. Just like that was actually I'm going to have about a teaspoon of sugar in there. You literally don't want to add too much sugar because then you'll have a sweet gravy and it's really hard to come back to the Thick, you want to the spoon. Taste them and make sure that they, you can't just serve them to you know people that yeah you get me. Delicious. Mm. Everything's finished. Let's play. I'm gonna show you guys the play how it turns out looking, and then um, we will see you guys then. So here how our meal came out. Um, I added some rice under the pork chops. So if you guys want to see me, if you guys want to, if you guys want me to show you how I make my rice. Have you ever had a dreams that that you um you had you you? Uh, let me know and I will show you guys gladly. But here's the meal: the mac and cheese, the green beans with the bacon, and then the pork chops with the supposed to be white gravy, but kind of turned out into. You know a dark gravy, which is okay. You know, cooking is never predictable. But um, yeah. So thank you for joining me on today's cooking video with your boy Rashawn. Go follow my social media.